Pretty soon, you'll be able to charge your phone in your pocket while walking around the house. And meanwhile, your electric car will refuel while just standing in your driveway. Power will run to all your gadgets through the air, without any wires whatsoever. I know it sounds a bit sci-fi, but scientists have figured out how to do it. Eh, don't worry, they're not going to zap electricity through the air like lightning. Instead, they'll use something much safer – magnetic fields. Let's say you have a special coil of wire that makes a magnetic field when it gets power. If you bring another coil close to it, that second coil absorbs the energy and turns it into electricity. That means you can power things without plugging them in, like a light bulb that turns on all by itself. And according to scientists at the World Health Organization, these magnetic fields are completely safe. Now, I suspect you've already used an early version of wireless electricity. When you place your electric toothbrush on its charger or the phone on the charging mat, electric energy jumps between them. There's a special coil inside the charger that creates an invisible spinning energy field when it gets electricity from the wall. The toothbrush or phone has another coil inside it that catches this energy and turns it back into electricity to charge the battery. This is called electromagnetic induction, but this method only works for short distances and wouldn't be useful for powering your entire house. Some companies are already working to make this technology perfect and accessible. One company has invented their method to send power through the air called air cord. They use it in real-life products. One cool example is tiny video screens placed next to products in supermarkets with changing images. These screens don't need batteries or power cords. Another gadget that's running on this tech is a smart lock designed by the same company. Normally, smart electronic locks need powerful batteries, but this one stays powered without a battery and gets energy from a wide charge transmitter in the ceiling. That transmitter is like an invisible power outlet. It works similarly to a TV remote where you use an infrared beam to control the gadget from a distance. In this case, the transmitter takes electricity and sends it to all gadgets that need power as an infrared beam. The transmitter analyzes each device to see how much power it needs, just like a Wi-Fi router manages the internet for different devices. If no devices need power, the transmitter goes to sleep, but it wakes up now and then to check if anything needs charging. Nikola Tesla, a brilliant inventor and electrical engineer who made significant contributions to the development of electricity, would be really happy to see all this come true. He believed he could build a system that would transmit electricity and communication signals through the Earth's ionosphere all over the world. To prove his idea, he built a special Wardenclyffe Tower in New York. His plan was to use the Earth itself like a giant electrical circuit. In 1899, Tesla traveled to Colorado Springs, known for its big thunderstorms. He built a lab there to test his wireless electricity ideas. The high altitude and frequent lightning storms made it the perfect place for his experiments. Then he returned to New York, and with money from a wealthy investor, he started building the Wardenclyffe Tower. Tesla placed iron rods and copper plates under the tower to help send power through the Earth there would be a huge metal dome on top of the tower. By 1902, the tower and lab were mostly built, but Tesla ran into funding problems. The Wardenclyffe Tower never worked as Tesla had hoped, and in 1917, it was torn down and sold for scrap. In any case, Tesla's idea only worked for short distances. The farther the electricity had to travel, the weaker it became. Scientists needed a way to send energy over long distances, and they found two viable solutions in the middle of the 20th century – microwaves and lasers. In 1964, engineer William C. Brown flew a tiny helicopter for 10 hours using only microwave power. Then, in 1975, Brown and a NASA scientist, Richard Dickinson, sent 30,000 watts of power over a mile using a research station called Venus. But there was still a problem. Half of the power was lost before it reached its destination. Over the years, 
technology kept improving. Computers, lasers, solar panels, and transistors became more advanced and opened new horizons for wireless electricity. It could eventually help us switch to cleaner energy from fossil fuels like coal and gas. New Zealand-based company MROD uses power beaming technology that starts with electricity from the power grid and turns it into microwaves. These microwaves travel through the air from a sending antenna to a receiving antenna, which turns them back into electricity that we can use. But there's a problem. Various kinds of waves work in different ways. Microwaves can travel long distances without losing much power, which makes them great for sending energy to remote islands or factories. But if you try to send microwaves all the way from space, you'd need a receiver the size of a city. Lasers can make the energy beam smaller and more focused, which means the receiver can also be tiny. But lasers can be blocked by things like clouds, fog, or dust. Right now, power beaming won't replace power lines over huge distances. But it could be used for smaller projects like charging flying taxis and delivery drones in the sky, powering robots in cities and factories, and replacing backup generators during emergencies. Countries all over the world are investing in power beaming. Europe is focused on clean energy. The Japanese Space Agency hopes to have a giant solar power station orbiting Earth, collecting sunlight, and beaming electricity down to us by the 2030s. This space station could send 1 gigawatt of energy, as much as a big nuclear power plant produces in a year. The space power station is still a work in progress, but the technology is getting better and cheaper. So, in the future, we might have a world where there are no more tangled wires, no more ugly power lines, and even free electricity for everyone. Japanese scientists are now working on another groundbreaking tech, a special machine that can turn sunlight and water into hydrogen fuel. This clean energy source could one day power cars, homes, and even entire cities. The current reactor is as big as a small house. It works by using photocatalytic sheets, which act like tiny solar panels that absorb sunlight and trigger a chemical reaction. This process splits water molecules into oxygen and hydrogen. It allows the hydrogen to be collected and used as fuel. Right now, the process isn't efficient enough to produce hydrogen on a large scale. Most existing methods of making hydrogen still rely on fossil fuels. But the scientists behind this new reactor found a better way. Instead of breaking water apart all at once, which wastes energy, their machine does it in two steps. First, it separates oxygen, then it collects hydrogen to make the process smoother and more effective. The team used a special photocatalyst that responds to UV light, and they found that under natural sunlight, the solar energy conversion efficiency was one and a half times higher than in the lab. In some places with stronger sunlight, the efficiency could be even greater. But still, at its current stage, the reactor only reaches about 1% efficiency, which is far too low for commercial use. Scientists believe that for this technology to become practical, they need to increase efficiency to at least 5%. To make this happen, they need better photocatalysts and larger reactors. And they would also need to find safe ways to handle a tricky byproduct, which is a highly flammable gas created during the process. But if they can boost efficiency, Many scientists and companies will start mass-producing this technology, leading to clean, renewable hydrogen energy on a large scale. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.